How useful is deuterium depleted water for improving mitochondrial health? Really good. And look, the as long as I would not take it very low, I know that they do sell like um, 20 parts per million. So, but I would not use 20 ppm. I would definitely use around, if I've got mitochondrial fun dysfunction about 90 or getting it around 90 or 100. So you have to dilute it with regular water to get it to that level. Or you buy stuff which is 105 ppm and, and you just consume that. So you don't dilute it at all. Um, so it is, it, it's, you know, that's one way. The other way is to do a more high fat carnivore diet. Um, if you're not too concerned about, um, you know, because certain people may not be fat adapted in the early stages, that can be sometimes hard to do. If you are fat adapted, then it's easier where you can just do higher, higher um, fat in order to cause dilution. Um, so as your body comes in, the chylomicrons come in, they'll drop off some in the adipose tissue. And by dropping low deuterium fat in there, they're going to dilute the deuterium levels within the fat cells themselves over time. And so that means that when you're, you are losing weight or using energy from your adipose, you're not getting high deuterium content all the time like you would normally if you ate seed oils like I did for many years. And I've been, you know, it's, it's been a long journey for me to sort of improve my mitochondrial function um, where I had very little energy. I ended up with a heart disease at age 44. Now I'm 56 and I end up with a lot of damage. And so I'm slowly sort of fixing that. Now, this can actually improve your, it can actually slow down the damage by diluting the um, deuterium. You still need some deuterium. We don't want people chronically going below 100 because you still need for connective tissue, you need and collagen, bones and stuff like that. Deuterium is required. That's where it should be, not in the energy production systems of the mitochondria. But... Um, so deuterium depletion of water can actually help that along a bit faster. But you can actually get what is called like, like a, a plateau where it doesn't work anymore. And the reason why that doesn't ha that happens, Carl, is because they're only addressing part of the problem. Part of the problem is that you're actually, you know, I've talked about this before, that the Krebs cycle is all about getting rid of, of so because you per, in the mitochondria you're actually producing metabolic water but in order to produce metabolic water that is doesn't have deuterium which basically means you're not it doesn't have the high it doesn't have hydrogen which has got an extra a neutron in its uh, you know it just has a single um, proton rather than a proton and the hydrogen the hydrogen is the problem sorry the Neutron is the problem. So the neutron in the in the is the problem there, not the proton. The proton is what we want. The neutron is the problem. It's bigger. It doubles the weight. That's what heavy water is. Water that's got higher amounts of um, neutrons, and those neutrons they're great for nuclear power stations. You know, neutron radiation. You know, to to get a um, nuclear um, uh, you know processes happening. Heavy water. That's why they used it but it's really bad for your mitochondria. You know, those neutrons just damage, bust those nanomotors or slow them down. And so that's the problem um, there. So what you what you do want to do is you want to lower that threshold in your body. You can do it two ways, as I said. One is by a high-fat, therapeutic high-fat diet for a prolonged period of time to dilute the amount of deuterium in your body. That's one option. The other one, a quicker way, is through deuterium depleted water to dilute um, the amount in there. The downside of that is that it only works to, at a certain threshold to stop the, the continuous damage. The only way to fix the damage, this is where a lot of these people that do deuterium depletion are missing the point, is taurine. You need taurine to be in the system to get enough taurine to, and you have to use it in the evening to amplify, to bring down cortisol and increase melatonin. 
I've done a number of um, videos covering that, the cancer ones. It covers a lot of that information. Melatonin is the thing that you want to increase. That's why blue blocking glasses, I wear them at night because I want my melatonin to be sky high. I sleep better, but also that melatonin will repair my mitochondria. And over time, I will increase my respiration, as it's called. That means my ability to utilize um, you know, my mitochondria to produce ATP energy, the source of energy. So adenosine triphosphate. So to do that, I need to basically heal over time the damaged mitochondria that I've done. And that's what I do. I continue consuming high quality um, pastured um, fats so I can slowly dilute the levels of deuterium because I couldn't access deuterium depleted water in those days. And I've, you know, I don't bother. But if people want a real quick fix, it does work, but it's not enough. The reason why it works on the on the dogs is because dogs are able to endogenously produce more taurine. That's the missing link that all these experts are, uh, uh, don't understand. That is the real missing link. Cats, it doesn't work on cats. They give them dep deuterium depleted water. It doesn't get rid of their cancer because they don't have the the taurine to fix their mitochondria. You need the taurine um, that actually directly reduces reactive oxygen species, directly repairs damage to the mitochondria, but also amplifies and increases um, you know, melatonin and, and helps the, in the synthesis of it as well. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important element as a cofactor. And by doing that, you're actually then able to heal and improve your energy production over time. Now, how long it's going to take, there's no research, we don't know, you know, how am I in 20 years or in 10 years or in 15 years or in five years, am I going to get youthful mitochondria that are able to have energy levels equivalent to what I had when I was 20? No idea. Unlikely, but you never know. I'm still biohacking hope hoping that I can increase my mitochondrial function and respiration levels. Um, if it works, you you'll guys will know um, in that regard. But that's the sort of, yeah, the sort of focus of what I'm trying to do. So, yes, it does help, but it, not alone. You need a carnivore diet that actually furnishes. Um, and also, you, it's a three-pronged. You need the taurine from a from a carnival diet. You need the um, the depletion protocol, and you need the sun. You need vitamin D plays an important role as well. You need to basically, you know, the sun also helps with the deuterium depletion, and you need to modulate your circadian rhythms because the circadian rhythms are also playing an important role in order to amplify melatonin production in the evening so you can get that effect you know so and sometimes you may need to take in the evening a bit more taurine in order to get a bit more you'll know if you take a certain level you know some people will take like two four grams and they will get sleepy and some people in the evening will take you know need to take six or eight before they get sleepy the threshold is different because the requirements are different. There may be other things that are reducing your your taurine. You know, oxalate can deplete it. Um, other things like in the environment, like um, mold, can actually have a negative effect on taurine. There's a number of other things, the exposures, uh, petrochemical exposures. Um, you know, um, hydrocarbons and stuff like that can also have an effect on depleting due to the um, detox pathways that are using that require also taurine and choline. So all these sort of things can and your requirements can change slightly.